Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Sean from Tested. And today we are gonna be reviewing a 3D printer, one that you've been very excited to test. Super excited about. Uh, we had the Form Labs Form 1 Plus uh, about a year or so ago, which was a great SLA printer. And this is the update to Form 2. The Form 2, now this is a SLA printer. Some of the printers we've tested in the past and shown you guys in the past are FDM printers. Yeah. Now to give a quick overview, what's the difference between an FDM printer and an SLA printer? So FDM is typically what you're finding in your home printer uh, category most of the time. It's one that has plastic filament on a spool. You feed it into a hot end, basically a glorified hot glue gun, and it will draw each layer with the plastic layer by layer until it's finished. Uh, usually uses either ABS, like Lego plastic, or PLA, uh, which is a biodegradable plastic, mm -hmm. um, versus SLA, which is a resin-based uh, uh, printer. So it has a liquid resin that is UV sensitive, and it's cured by uh, laser in this case. Uh, there are other ones that are called DLP printers, which cure by basically a DLP projector, which shoots the layer at one time versus drawing the layer with the laser. So in, instead of melting plastic, you're curing plastic. Right. And it's still doing it layer by layer. So some of these terms still apply when we're talking about talking about layer resolution, yes. when we're talking about the print bed size, volume size. We'll get to all of that. We actually have the Form 2 running right now. It's about to finish a print. And you can see uh, we're printing your scuttlefish. Yep. Um, if you've seen a 3D printer like a MakerBot, an Ultimaker, an FDM printer, the build platform is on the bottom. Right. And the filament comes from the top and it prints up. SLA printers, like the, at least the Form Labs, Form 1 and Form 2, they print upside it's, down. It's a little it's a little hard to get your head around. It's kind of like a bat hanging from the platform here. Yeah, yeah so the build platform is that top piece and it's moving along the z-axis. It's actually going up and down with every layer. Correct. And what you have then is a reservoir of, la of, of resin that gets wiped and then the laser is beneath that too? Yep, so there's a sealed chamber with mirrors and the laser optics down there. And it, as you can see, it goes, it's basically drawing the layer with the laser. Wherever the layer hits in that liquid, it solidifies it. But it's and actually then, going through the tray, the reservoir liquid, yes. and then also hitting and curing those exact same yeah. points. So when it lowers it down, it's basically touching the bottom of the platform, which is a soft, uh, optically clear silicon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once it's touching the bottom, there's a very thin gap where there's a layer of liquid between the model and then the laser cures uh, and bonds it to the rest of the model. Wow. What are some of the advantages or differences at least uh, in terms of the finished model when you're talking about something that's FDM printed like this right. or something that's SLA printed? It can be because... a little it's it can be a little deceiving because so for example the 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 um, the lowest setting on this layer wise is 100 microns, which is 0.1 millimeters, which is pretty much the same thing for the highest setting on an FDM printer. Mm. So you're like, well, what's you know the big deal? But the, the difference with a resin printer in, in this case is the, the detail or the feature resolution. So the feature resolution is basically how fine of a detail can it draw. So like on the scuttlefish, for example, which has a lot of little rivets and, and fins and stuff like that, can it resolve those? Can it actually print those? And while the if you set this to the same layer resolution as the FDM printer, the FDM printer might not be able to resolve the rivets, for example. Yeah. So the layers may be the same type, and so you may see the same like, striations on it, mm -hmm. but when we're talking about feature, on an FDM printer, you're working on two motors that have to move precisely on the X and Y axis, right. and so those stepper motors and those rails limit how fine you can draw the outline of each layer. Correct, and and you'll and even you'll you'll also find just a little bit of differences, like how clean do the layers match up? Mm. You'll find it's typically a little cleaner on the resin prints than versus the FDM. Well, let's talk about the prints themselves. Since mm -hmm. we've had this for over a month, we've been using it like crazy, <laughs> like crazy, <laughs> printing so much stuff, having a ton of fun with it, and having a lot of success. So yes. some of the prints that you want to show off, not only compare the prints from the Form 2 with the Form 1, but also some other professionally printed models yes. you've had. Yes, yes. Now we've printed a ton of these. <laughs> the scuttlefish, scuttlefish is quite popular. Yeah, yes. the scuttlefish is being printed right now. Here's an example of one. One of the first things we printed with the clear resin mm -hmm. at one of the highest resolutions. Um, it looks beautiful. 
and uh, there's support material that you removed already. Yeah. Um, and then you printed some additional ones. So let's talk about these right here. Yeah. So we should talk about let's let's go back to resolution real quick. So this printer will the the lowest settings 100 microns, but it'll also do uh, 50 and 25 microns. So it'll go down to 0 0.025 millimeters. Theoretically, a layer at four times as thin as. A highest resolution right. FDM printer. Now that is that is resin dependent. Currently, the only ones that will do 0.025 are black, gray, and they're castable materials. The other ones are uh, limited at uh, 0.05, which, frankly, for most prints, I didn't feel the need to go beyond that because it yeah. looks really good. So, uh, yeah, we have a variety of scuttlefishes here. Um, so what we did is I had, I did not pay for this, I want to put the disclaimer on, but I had a professional print of the scuttlefish done in a black resin. Uh, it's at 0.05 millimeters. And believe it or not, this little guy from a professional print lab was $200. Wow, so that's a, a service that you can send your model to. Mm -hmm. It still uses SLA and costs 200 bucks to print that model. And so it made a lot of sense for us to want to do a direct comparison. Yes, now it is, it is beautiful. It's very nicely done. The little details such as the propellers even came out. Um, but I had one issue out of this is they didn't have the best orientation for this because you can see the print layers on top, which in that level of print, you, you can orient it so it wouldn't. But we did the exact same settings and the exact same size on the form lab, and I also did the exact same orientation. Mm. And so, because you, you can even see the print lines are pretty much lining up. And it really, really held up to the really expensive print. Now, there are some things like, so this propeller didn't turn out quite the whole way like yep. this one did. It's a very fine detail, which I didn't actually expect it to turn out because it's so fine and it's unsupported. Mm. Now, uh, and the tentacles look great. Now, where you start to see some differences if we flip it over here. So we got uh. the pro print here and this. Now, disclaimer, this when this is comes out, you have all these support uh, rods on it that you need to take it off of. Right. So that's what it's hanging from the platform with. So in this case, the, the professional place removed the, the supports and they sanded and cleaned it. They finished so, it for Yeah, so you, 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 there is a certain, even with as nice as these turn out, there's a certain amount of cleanup that you have to do. So with this one, I didn't, I literally just cleaned this off before I did this, so I just yanked off the supports. There's no cleanup, not even with an X-Acto or anything, so this could look much better than it does, okay? Um, but you'll notice there is a little bit of mushiness that happens down here. This is the the, the bottom, basically, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of mushiness um, and compared to the top, which is much finer. Yeah, think about that for a second. The way this comes out of the printer, you know, if you look at the scuttlefish, we actually orient it not like this. It's oriented like this. You have the supports. The bed is on top. The supports are tapping into the top of this, and as it's coming out of the resin and getting cured, of course the bottom part is gonna get most of the benefits of the cure. Right, because if you think about it, what it's doing is drawing a bunch of little spears, basically, that this initial layer has to be drawn on top of. And that's tricky business, because yeah. you're talking about, if you're if you're doing a .05 millimeter layer, the very first layer that you, you lay down there, that's a tricky business to get that nice and neat and perfect. Yeah. Um, and that that's a good uh, a comparison that we'll talk about that when we get to supports but there is a big difference between this and say a, a tens of thousands of dollars machine that makes this a little bit neater mm -hmm. but all things considered i think this is a pretty it's a pretty, pretty impressive comparison. comparison. Absolutely, we definitely didn't spend two hundred dollars worth of material yeah. to print this. Now let's move to this guy. Yeah, so this is also off the form, right? Also off the form too. And for this one, you oriented the way you would have printed it to yes. hide the layers, to have it meld with the curves, and it's frankly beautiful. And it's also at the highest layer. So this is 0.05. This is 0.025. Mm -hmm. Now you can still see, at least with the black material, you the can individual layers. Sure, it's not yeah. invisible. No, but. There's so much detail, like this is sharp. Yeah, and if you if you put a layer of primer on that, most of the layers would more or less disappear. Yeah, the little fins are, it's like a little saw. Even if you look at and the bottom. The bottom's a lot cleaner. Yep. Now, now that's because, so this one printed this way, hanging upside down. This one, I oriented like this. Diagonally. And part of the reason for that, there, what you're gonna find with the resin printers, there is an art to orientation. 
and the program will try to help you out and orient it how it thinks it should, but sometimes you know you have the, the face of something that won't be seen, that's where you wanna put the supports. Absolutely. So that's, I tried to put them on the bottom. And the other problem is, this has a big cross section. So if you picture, like once it gets like midway, and this is a very good example here where this one failed. So this is the cross section of what it has to peel off the print bed to get to the next layer. And when you start getting to peeling off a big section like this, it can it can break off the supports, yeah. and, which is what happened with this, because yeah. it's a lot of sheer force that you're putting on that. Right. So if you orient it this way, no matter where you are in this, the cross section is way smaller, which not only helps you with successful prints, but it uh, tends to give you better detail. Mm. So thinking about that is important. Something that's also interesting to note that when we print with FDM printers, uh, there's also a lattice network inside for the structure of the print. The infill, The correct. infill. Uh, here, it's solid. Yes, yeah. and, that's, and that's a very interesting um, point, and it's a good example of thinking, designing your model for a specific printer. Sometimes I'll have the same model, but in three different versions for three different printers. Mm, wow. Because, so for so example, the Scuttlefish is, uh, is a solid model, so if I put this on an FDM printer. It's gonna use a lot of material. Or, or but on an FDM printer, I can say make this 20% filled right, right. and make the walls two layers thick. Mm -hmm. So you can save a ton of material and make it print faster. Right. Uh, Resin printers don't do that. Even the high-end printers don't huh. don't do for the most part don't do that. It's if it's a solid model, it's a solid model. So if I wanted this hollow, I would have to manually make this model hollow with a hole for draining liquid, right. and you'd have to consciously do that, which is a lot more work. Right. So it, it's yeah, it's interesting. But also, but on the other hand, this in one piece would be very difficult to print on an FDM printer. Yeah. So before we move on, I want to show a few more successes of prints we've had with this printer. For example, we printed two of these uh, Nautilus ships. Yeah, Squid with, Attack. With Squid Attack. Is, yeah. One of them still has the uh, support structure, so print it this way. And on this one, where we remove the support structure, because of the texture of this, you can barely see any yeah, of the you layers. Can, the texturing of the skin on the on the squid is great. It, it looks almost like it's a cast product. Yeah. That's how beautiful it is. I showed this to some of our friends, everyone who comes by the office, and they couldn't believe this was printed with a 3D printer because it, it, it looks it looks like a cast. It looks really good, and the fact that the, these little tentacles that stand out are like free, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's really good. That's actually. Uh, another one from Bold Machines, which uh, I did the scuttlefish for. Yep. They have um, a thing for squids, apparently. And then we've also done a test of different materials. You also t uh, printed your... Uh, your the, the famous your jet car, jet yeah. Jet car. Buckaroo Banzai jet car. Yep, and you can tell on the back, here's the difference. On this side, this is the Form 1. Yep. This is the Form 2. And just look at the back and the detail. You pointed out you can even see the detail on the license plate yeah. on the Form 2 print on your right. Because not only part of the thing they did with this, it has a, uh, I think the laser is 50% more powerful, which allows for, it, it gave them uh, faster prints and finer detail. Because the detail, the feature resolution was 300 uh, microns on this that it could resolve. On the Form 2, it's 200. So you, you're, you can read the license plate on this one. That's <laughs> so amazing. It's pretty good. That's pretty cool. Uh, we also downloaded some models from Thingiverse, converted them, and ported them to mm -hmm. be printed on the Form 2, something like the Zorg ZF-1. Now, this is a perfect case of a model that maybe wasn't intended to be 3D printed. Yes. It worked, and it looks beautiful, but it's, it took a hell of a lot of work to get it out of the support structure. And, that's a, and this is a great example of that. Not everything is meant to be 3D printed. So. Um, the problem with it is it's made in one piece, like the model is an all one piece. So you ran into a few issues with that. First, removing all the support material, there is support material up inside where all these pieces are that you simply couldn't get to without breaking things. The other problem with this is that the it was meant as a digital model, so it wasn't necessarily made with the thought of manufacturing. So mm. some of these walls are very, very thin, and it, especially at this scale. So you can see where these actually started cracking even before it was finished and out of the printer. Wow, yeah, you can see right, right there, the, it's cracking mm -hmm. on that layer right there. And this is one of my favorite things to show off, is if you look real careful in this bottom piece, there's a giant bubble in here. Yeah. And that's because this, Instead of being modeled as solid, this was modeled as a sh as a hollow piece. And so when it with, came out, with no hole in it, so there's actually a bubble of trapped <laughs> resin in there. Which, if you're not careful, you spring a leak in and you get resin everywhere. So, 
But having said, if you look at the details on the weaponry up here and all the detail, it is gorgeous. And yeah. some of the, like the girder work on it, it the detail on it printed out great. It's just that this is no fault of the printer itself. It's more of the model. And in this case, I would have divided this up into more pieces yeah. and or, uh, you know, thickened up the walls. Yeah. Now, yeah. 3D printers, I know it's tempted, people are tempted to buy one, they think the learning curve is easy, and there's still a lot of things that you need to know in the nitty-gritty nuances of running uh, both FDM and an SLA printer. For the SLA prints, for example, we've had some spectacular failures oh, yes. in addition to some successes. Uh, here's how this, the Form 2, can fail. One of the most common failures is the contamination in the pool sure. of the resin. You know, if there's a piece of cured resin that drops off from a print, and mm -hmm. if it's if we're not using the clear resin plastic and it's in the, the black plastic, and you don't comb through it, yes. then it can actually obscure the laser. Yeah, so this is a good example of that. Before this one failed, uh, the vat got contaminated, and <laughs> this, is go this is really bad. So it's just, there was chunks of resin floating around there that not only obscured the laser, but then bonded to layers as well. So it just made for a real junky print. Yeah, we had a few instances where it did the the base, the raft here, didn't even adhere, which is somewhat unusual. We never did quite uh, well. The one time we do know, I I swapped resins, and so when you're swapping the resins, you want to clean everything up. So I wiped down the platform with alcohol so that black resin didn't get in the clear, and I didn't let it dry long enough, wow. which then contaminated it and, and it didn't stick. Now, other times we weren't sure why it didn't stick. And uh, we think, I talked to Formas about it, I think it, it was a, a firmware thing because uh, after the recent firmware update, we have had no failures. Right. So here's an interesting case of a <laughs> failure. We tried to print a Borg sphere, at least half of one, yeah. and it totally it prints this way. You have the support structure on the inside, mm -hmm. uh, which we've snapped off, but it failed to print <laughs> just one part. And you can see it actually building up yeah. that resin on the interior uh, to a point where it just looks like a hole and then, then subsequently cracked yeah, the entire. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened with the Borser. Did did it break loose of the supports or did we remove those? Oh, or? I removed them separately. Okay. I, I, so this guy, I'm not exactly sure what happened. And, and that's just going to show... No matter what printer you have, even if it's a high-end machine, you're going to have failures. It happens. Um, this one just was particularly spectacular. Um, uh, some of the failures we had, like this guy, um, you can you can customize the supports, which involves how dense they are and how big the little points that attach to. So mm. in an effort to make cleanup easier and leave less marks, I was fiddling with things and I made really tiny points and I and I thinned out the layers and I think. A lot of the failures we had was me screwing around with the supports, but it's it's a learning process. Totally, so totally. You, you know, this one is a mystery though. I don't know the the doomed Borg sphere. So mm. uh, the Form Labs they've had their printer out for a while. The Form One, the Form One Plus, and the Form Two has some specific upgrades. It's not just about the higher resolution, the new um, and, and the new laser system. Mm -hmm. um, it out, now actually uses. A couple different things. There's the print cartridge, for example. They did a major upgrade on this. Like this wasn't like a, a minor thing. It's it's it definitely it's a it, yeah. It definitely deserves to be its own new model. Uh, and so we had the Form One, and I had the Form One Plus with, that we tested. And while I liked it, I had a lot of issues. I had a lot of failed prints, and and we had a failed laser and a failed peel mechanism, and. I felt, that, I felt it had a lot of potential, but there was kind of a list of things that was like, if this and this and this and this, then I think it would be the perfect machine. So they actually called us in um, to take a sneak peek before it was released, and and they pretty much went down the list, and it was like everything that I wished that they would fix. Wow. So, so let's go through some of those things. Yeah, so it has, for, it has a 40% bigger build uh, volume than the Form 1 Plus. It has a 50% more powerful laser mm -hmm. uh, that is faster and uh, does finer detail. Now, I didn't keep a log of how long the Form 1 prints took, but it, I could definitely notice that this was faster. Yep. Uh, I definitely felt that. Um, it's a little quieter. It is a little quieter. Um, uh, it, there's certain it's there's certain things that made a little noisy because they added this wiping mechanism, but it's it's a overall compared to an FDM machine, it's pretty quiet. Oh yeah. Um, the the biggest thing that they did, which made me really happy, was they sealed the optics chamber. Mm. On so there, and we can show it later. But there's a glass uh, that seals off the laser and the mirrors down below. On the previous version, it was open, and so that was a scary game. That if you took the tray out and the platform was still there, you could get a drip of resin down on the mirror, mm. uh, dirt and dust 
Scott's got down there all the time, and I have a background in, in film and TV repair, so I know how to clean optics, and it was a nightmare. Um, so my number one thing was that I wanted them to do that, and they did, and apparently they even, they put it in a, in a, uh, a room full of talcum powder, and they torture test it to make sure that nothing gets in there, and it's great. If, if you get a little something on the window up top, it's, it's far easier to clean off, so that was a big one for me. They revamped the peeling mechanism. So describe the peeling mechanism. Yeah. What so does that do? so as we are watching it do each layer, um, when it uh, it has to basically peel the layer it just uh, baked uh, to to raise it up and go to the next layer. So on the old one, it used a tilt mechanism. So mm -hmm. the model would be laying on there, and it would tilt it down and peel it off the silicon bottom, and then it would tilt it back up and raise it a little bit, and then it would do the thing. Um, with the new one, it does a side to side, which puts less stress on the model and it's less likely to break off of the supports or get skewed. And the other thing that they added was a wiping mechanism. So mm -hmm. not only does it go side to side, but a wiper goes through the resin. And that does a few things. It, uh, on the like black and grays, which have dyes in them, it keeps everything stirred up. So everything's distributed well, like the pigment. Uh, it can save prints. So uh, a common problem is uh, on a failed print is you get a layer that gets stuck to the bottom rather than to the model. Mm. And that was the kiss of death before uh, where the whole model would just be done. Um, in this case, it might it, the wiper will peel that off and uh, you might be able to get away with the rest of the model with maybe a minor blemish. Nice. Uh, so that, that helps a lot, it keeps debris out of the way. And overall, uh, other than the few times when it didn't stick to the platform, which like I said, seems to have been revolved with the firmware update, uh, we have had very few failed prints uh, due to like the support or anything like that, so. There is gonna be upkeep when owning a printer like this. There are consumables, things that you have to spend money on. Of course, there's the resin. Now the resin this time are on these proprietary cartridges. Mm -hmm. uh, before all the resin you poured into a, to the reservoir. Yeah, it just came in a jug. And now it's like the same amount, You like, instead of a, a liter, you have now a liter in this cartridge, and yes. it's just a, a plastic cartridge, but there's electronics in here, which may cause some people to be like, oh, DRM. But the what the electronics do is it communicates what resin is loaded into the machine, and it communicates with the tray so that it knows when it's almost out of resin, mm -hmm. so it can give you a warning or mm -hmm. stop or pause. And this is the biggest thing, it will auto-fill the tray. Uh, right. Before, if you had a really long print, uh, I would, you might have to come in and refill the tank at some point. Actually pour it into the tank. <laughs> yeah. um, and if, if you didn't, it would just keep printing away and there'd just be no resin there to print with. Right. This just plugs so, into the back, you yeah. pop the air vent, and then it just pushes into the bottom. Mm -hmm. Can you refill these? Yeah, as far as I know, yes, uh, because it's not so, you can, so let's, let's talk about, it's not, like I said, it's not DRM because you can override that. So you can say, don't use the cartridge, I'm going to pour it directly into the tray. Right. So if you have old form one resin, which is the same stuff, you can pour it into the tray. Or as far as I know, uh, this is just a screw chop, like a shampoo bottle, you could uh, pour put, it directly and then if you had an empty one, yeah. that ha now, uh, because they're chipped, you would need like a gray cartridge, for example, as sure. far as I know. But if you had gr uh, gray in an old bottle, as far as I understand, you could pour it in, and basically it has a little, a uh, rubber spout that there's a claw in there that squeezes it open and it just dribbles in. Now, mm. the initial filling like on an on a empty tank can take a while, it's a little slow, but I think you could probably take the cap off and fill it manually and then let it top it off right. you know, as it prints. And then, like I said, they just drop in. And overall, I, th these have been really nice. It really contained the mess. It made changing resins a lot easier and uh, I, I quite like the Has the price changed? Same price. Same uh, price for a bottle as a cartridge. Mm -hmm. The uh, let me consult that. These run depending on the material, one forty nine to one seventy five a liter, and, and that's, that's that a, price remains the same. And a liter, how many prints can that get you? you like? I that that's a hard metric. Uh, what they do, they uh, Formlabs does a little rook, like a chess piece rook, that is like their their signature print, mm -hmm. and you, you can print a whole bunch of those that they they show, show you graphically now. It, uh, last time I had, you know, a lot of failures and stuff on the form one. We had a Ziploc bag that was like this that didn't even use up a whole cartridge. So everything you can get on this table. A lot of yeah, we didn't all the black stuff plus more. Of this was on less than one cartridge. Got it. So you, I, I feel that 
like you get a feel for like how much like I feel like I get good value out of a roll of filament, for mm -hmm. example, and I think you get good value out of out of a, a, a cartridge of resin as well. As long and as you don't commit so much to a failed print. Exactly, it's a little more pricey to, for failed prints, um, but it's it, it it depends what you're doing. You got to decide what printer fits your needs and if this is worth it for you. Now another consumable is the actual tray itself because yes. the laser goes through the tray, cures the resin. But in the process of going through the tray, the silicone, over time, it can actually yeah, haze I up. Wish, actually, I wish I had an example. But we, um, yeah, so it has an optically clear silicon in the bottom. And the laser will degrade the silicon after a while. And what will start is start to get hazy, like kind of cloudy. And eventually, that will start to disrupt the laser, and it won't be able to draw as well. Uh, so the key with that is to move your prints around on the print bed. So like I will usually just keep track of like I printed in this corner, this corner, this corner. They hope to actually address that with some kind of software or firmware tracking in the future which would help right. a lot. Um, so that will distribute the use of the tray more evenly. Yeah, we started printing the sensor using the clear resin and we printed a few of these guys, a bunch of scuttlefish, these two guys. These are like 11 to 14 hour prints and yeah. we got through a tray, I think, before we finish the cartridge because we weren't being smart about where yeah, we're we, positioning I didn't, we weren't the objects. We forgot about moving around. Yeah. And their, their general recommendation is uh, one tray per two liters of, of okay. resin. So, and the trays run $59. Now, that's the one thing I, I would love to see some way to swap out the silicon bottom yeah. because it seems so wasteful to have to th you know pitch the whole tray, but no. Can you use the trays between the different resins if I'm using gray resin or the tough resin? Technically, yes. You'd have to clean it out very <laughs> intensely. It sucks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you basically you want a dedicated tray per resin. Um, really, if you're gonna use this machine uh, and on any regular basis, I have clean trays out in an emergency, but it's really annoying. Mm. Uh, so you wanna have a dedicated tray per resin. Yeah, some other minor upgrades to this, there's a full color touchscreen down the front for queuing up your prints. It has Wi-Fi built in, so you can use the software, the preform software, send the files over layer by layer over Wi-Fi. There is, of course, USB and, and even Ethernet in the back if you wanna move files over the traditional way. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually had some problems with the Wi-Fi with our network. Failed the it was cutting out a few cutting times, out a yes. few times, but it did get through at the end. Um, the software pretty easy to use, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, you can adjust the the um, your support structure, the density, the orientation, yes. the, how fine the points are, and it'll even give you like a heat map in the software to show to where in the print you're yeah. not getting enough support. Yes. So that stuff is all great. Um, and then, well, we finished printing something in this video mm -hmm. quite a while ago, and we wanted to show you what the actual cleanup process is like. So let's reset up here and then bring some of the cleanup trays and get this scuttlefish out so you guys can see it. Yeah. All right, Sean, so the scuttlefish is printed and we're ready to show you out there what the cleanup process is like. So what yes. do we have in front of us? We have alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah. So the, the other nice thing I like about the, the Form Labs kit is that it, it's, it's complete. So it has a cleaning station that comes with it as well. And they actually did a, a major upgrade on this as well where they have easy open uh, lids uh, that you can do one-handed. It also comes with sealing lids that if you're gonna have this sealed for uh, unused for a while, and it has a little cleaning basket to dunk it. So you have your the, the dirty one where you do the initial rinse. So this is getting all the loose excess resin off of this. And then it has the second rinse, which which gets the last little bit off. So, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the build platform out of the printer. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's actually drips of resin because it's been dipping itself into the reservoir the whole time. Uh, that actually stays there. If a print finishes you know, overnight and you have it left on over the weekend, it'll yeah. be fine. This clear plastic it's... will actually prevent it from all the UV. Yeah. Um, but what I'm gonna do first of all is dump that extra resin back into the reservoir. Gotta save every little bit. Every little bit. Every little bit. At 150 bucks a liter, Yeah. Just save every little bit. Cool, there it goes. Now, do you do anything else to, to clean off the um, the build platform? That's usually all I do. I usually don't do anything more than that it, unless I'm changing the uh, the resin. Great. And because we're using clear resin, at least for this instance, I can see that there are no fallen pieces in yeah. here, nothing we need to comb out. Uh, with the other ones, you actually have literally taken a comb 
and gone yeah, through. That is as complete as this setup is, the one missing piece is if you do have bits or things that break off, you literally go to the CVS or something and you get a hair comb and you run it through the tank as a little sifter. So yeah. yeah. Now at this point, it's still pretty firmly stuck. Very much right. so. And I can't just pry it off my fingers. You got gloves yeah. on and they give you actually yeah. a platform. So yeah, they upgraded, they gave you this little handle. Well, it's not actually that little, but to help you have a grip. And so what they did here, th this is really on there. And I have broken prints in the past trying to get them off. So what they did, uh, might be a little hard to see on this, but there's little helper I notches. So they put little notches that give you a place to get the scraper under. So and that's in the software. So in the software, yeah. when you load a model in, and as you're adjusting, and I would use this guy. You like that one? Oh yeah. All right. Um, uh, well, it does have the little notch in it, so yeah. As you're loading um, your support structure, you can actually, there you ah, go. There we go, that was not too bad. I'll lay out the, the, the helper notches, and then pop two things out. Yeah. And there it goes. Now at this point, I can scrape well, this a little bit. Yeah, so you might get, the one thing you need, you might get some actual little uh, bits, especially after scraping it. So it's a good thing to just take this as you like, a scrape or two before you put it back in there. So, yeah. so I'll yeah. take care of that. All right. So at this point, uh, we're gonna move this to the alcohol bath. And normally you would let this soak for a few minutes, but for our demo purposes, we're going to pretend. And uh, you have five minutes later. Well, you have two alcohol baths. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference? Is it just this? Is there a special? The, the first one tends to get really, really dirty. Mm. Um, and then the second one is, is your cleaner one, that is your final rinse. Now, this is just regular old isopropyl. I believe you can use denatured too. I would need to double check on this, but you can get it at any, any uh, you know, uh, pharmacy or anything like that. Uh, I will often get it at the hardware store, like in the big metal can, so in bulk, because it's quite a lot. Um, and, and it does last a long time, so you know. Yep, do you want to give Let's it a Let's do a second rinse. And then you take this out. At this point, a lot of that excess resin's already rinsed off. Yeah. Let's give it a final wash. Now, uh, is there any concern of leaving it in the isopropyl for too long? You would, I wouldn't leave it in there overnight, but for, if you forgot like for an hour or two, you'd probably be fine. Mm. Cause the alcohol does, it dissolves the resin so it can start to eat away at the, even the cured stuff. But for the most part, yeah, it's pretty good. So Nora, like I said, we would leave this in longer, but for, the magic of the internet, we're gonna take everything out. So we have a stand and a scuttle fish. And, and it does come with some starter gloves. I'd highly recommend using them. So at this it, point, <laughs> that's basically it. It's a yeah. little wet right now. The alcohol is gonna evaporate. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fine. You're gonna let it dampen off, maybe let it sit. Uh, what type of environments? Um, do you want to use this in with windows? Is natural yeah. light okay? Well, the 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 alcohol is far stinkier than any of the resin is. So um, it, it's not bad to have some ventilation because of this guy. Um, one thing, you need a lot more space for this than you do for an FDM printer because you have all of this to deal with and no matter how hard you try, everything is gonna get sticky. Like, you can see it all over the cleaning station. It's terrible. Like, yeah. uh, so that is just no way around. It's gonna get sticky. Um, not best not to have it to like at a in front of a nice sunny window probably because this is UV reactant. So the finished models, you don't want to let them sitting in the sun or like under a halogen light or anything like that because it can uh, discolor or even make them brittle or warp them if right. it's thin stuff. Now, having said that, this is somewhat counterintuitive. When you take these out, even after they dry off, they're going to be a little gummy, a little yeah. tacky. And that's because the, the especially after washing the alcohol and everything, this isn't 100% completely cured. So one of the things that they do professionally and what they do like at Form Labs when they're testing stuff is they have a, a UV oven. Now there are actually professional UV ovens like for sterilization and stuff like that. The really high-end printers come with a dedicated, it looks like a little furnace that's mm -hmm. a UV oven. But you can, uh, Form Labs has a really uh, great video up about making a little UV oven using a, uh, a little nail salon, oh, UV yeah, cure yeah. for nails. Totally. Uh, 25 bucks on Amazon and you can basically make a little box with some mirrors or foil in it to reflect the light around evenly and pop this in for a little while to cure. Um, that's one of the things I hope to do for a project later. So uh, we've just been handling them normally. Um, so after, 
because what you want to do is if you're going to, you can sand and paint these like a regular plastic model, but you want to let them fully cure because if you try sanding them right out of the, out of the thing or even a day later, they're going to be a little gummy. It's just going to smear. It, it, it won't actually sand you. It'll just kind of gum up everything. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. And another thing I will do is I will often, if I'm not going to paint these, I'll at least put a clear coat on them just in case if I do have it sitting by a window or any kind of UV, it'll protect it. Cool. Um, so we yeah. would let this normally sit for a bit, and then you can just get some snips. Yeah. Hold this and just snip off the pieces. Uh, we're just going to demo so, that really quickly. So they come with flush cuts. I have my fancy ones from Zuron and photo etch scissors, which are excellent for removing the supports. So you can basically, just, some of these you can just break off by hand, but if it's a particularly delicate piece, you definitely want to go in. If you do the flush cuts, it will break it off to where you can barely see where it was. And so this, this is not too bad on the scuttlefish, there's not too many, but sometimes this can be really tedious. And a good tip is to go to the raft and just chop that up first. It will make everything, getting everything else off. Oh, shrapnel! It'll make everything else a lot easier. And then you can go and snip these all off. And then you can do additional cleanup with an X-Acto. And then once it's like, when it's fully cured, a little bit of sandpaper, and they recommend a little mineral oil, because sometimes it'll leave like a little white mark wherever you broke off the supports. So having said that, we, we talked earlier about that we got some mushy parts on some yeah. of the things. And that's part of the nature of like a prosumer desktop that you can buy for your home or, or small business versus a tens of thousands of dollars like professional machine. The professional machines tend to, rather than hanging from a platform, they have a platform that is in a vat of liquid, like a big vat. So the platform actually sinks down to the vat to start and, or it keeps sinking down into this vat farther and farther. So there's no strain on it between layers. So it's because it's just dropping it down and doing the next layer. So you need a really big machine to do that because it's a really big vat mm -hmm. and you got to keep it really clean and all that stuff. But the advantage of that is that you can have a very, very fine lattice work of support. It's like angel hair and you can just take it and rip it off really easily. Mm -hmm. The nature of this guy, because it's hanging and it has to peel off the bottom, it needs much heftier supports than a professional machine. So it's going to tend to leave bigger marks no matter what. Absolutely. So our $200 print had very fine marks that were easier to clean up. These can be a little bit more of a challenge to clean up and tend to get you know a few little mushy areas, but you can orient or even divide the model up to, to minimize yeah, a that. A little bit of pre-planning mm -hmm. and practice goes a long way with this printer. And it really is a prosumer model. This, even though they're calling it a desktop printer, it's gonna be for rapid prototyping. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not gonna be your first 3D printer. It's $3,500 for the Form 2. Yes. The Form 1 Plus still on sale though. It's a 2800 currently, 20, uh, 2799 Right. Mm -hmm. And then of course, uh, the cartridges and the resin, about $150 for a liter of it. And you also have to buy the trays every two cartridges or so. Uh, but the investment really depends on what you're gonna be doing with it. Like we've been using yes. it a lot. We've been printing out the print quality is great. Mm -hmm. If you're making little miniatures, I think that's fine. But if you're gonna be making like a BB-8 or something where you might wanna put multiple things, Yes. Yeah. Looking to all your options. I, I printed something for Tippett Studio and they're quite pleased. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sean, yes. for reviewing the Form 2, the Formlabs Form 2 SLA desktop 3D printer. Uh, if you guys have questions about this printer or other any other 3D printing projects we do on Tested, please post them in the comments below. We've been having a great time with this printer. Yes. I think we're gonna continue printing some stuff. Do you oh, want we definitely have in the some, future? We have some plans, yes. So stay tuned for that. Until then, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and Sean and I will see you next time. See you next time. Bye.